Welcome to Positive Parenting Today. I'm Jacqueline Muniz from the Children's Services Council of Palm Beach County, your host for today's show. The concept of touch points is a different approach to thinking about child development. It is a theory based on the work of Dr. T. Barry Brazelton, world-renowned expert in pediatrics and child development. According to Dr. Brazelton, right before a child is going to burst in a particular line of development, they will regress in another area of development just for a short period until they have mastered a new skill or reached a milestone. Dr. Brazelton refers to this period as a touch point. Dr. Brazelton states that there are eight touch points of child development in the first year of a child's life beginning prenatally. At 12 months, parents joyously celebrate their child's first birthday. So much has changed in one year. Parents feel more confident about their parenting skills because they have learned so much about their child and built a trusting, loving relationship along the way. However, parents will now begin to witness the emergence of a more independent and mobile child and experience the joys and challenges that come along with parenting during the 12 to 15 month touch points. Cheryl Jacobs, a registered nurse specialist, returns to the home of the Ralstons to check in with them as they reflect on the first year of Cannon's life and share their experiences parenting him at one year of age. Between the 12 and 15 month touch points, children's emotional ties to their parents have strengthened to the point where they use their parents as a base from which to step out and explore their world, knowing that they can come back at any time and feel safe. The more secure they feel in their relationship with their parents, the more independent they want to be, and the more they learn. Hey. Hi. Hi. How are you guys doing? Good, good. 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 Doing well. Good. So I decided in? maybe I just won't look at Canon in the beginning because sometimes around strange people, you know, what do you think? How is he around strangers? He, he does a lot of observing. Like he takes a lot of things in and really tries to process it in his head. Uh-huh. I see um, he's just starting to make eye contact with me right now and just kind of checking me out and mm -hmm. checking out what's going on in the room. A lot of action. Yeah. <laughs> a lot yeah. of action. So, wow, we've come a long way since I first met you guys last right. year. Yeah, yeah, we were watching some of the uh, videos of it, and I noticed, like, before, it seemed almost really like anything five feet and in he could concentrate on now. You know, he never noticed cameras or anything else before, and now he's noticing other people in the room and everything else that's going yeah. on. So it's a whole new world out there for him. Yes, yes. A big world. His range of observance is <laughs> a lot greater. Yes. <laughs> He wants to Yeah, he's my man. So have you guys stopped man. and thought back on this past year and thought about all the experiences and everything you've gone through and... Uh-huh. Oh, yes. We, yeah, we have. Yeah. yeah. He's, <laughs> what's he trying to tell you there? No. I think he wants to get down. Oh, are you protesting? So he tells you what he yes. likes and he doesn't like? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, a lot. Oh. You know, when we go um, to church on Sunday, yeah. we'll walk into the, um, where he stays, and right away he knows. What happens? He'll right away start to cry, and, you know, we'll try and talk to him. Uh, why are you crying? But he knows right away as soon as you walk into that door. Like, he knows what's going to happen. Yeah. yeah. Well, you want what and she starts, has. You saw what I had. You're asking me for it. Yes, you're asking me. Oh, oh, oh. Would you like that? Yes, I like that smile when you got it. I see that smile when you yeah. took it. How about the oh, red one? Oh, <laughs> yeah. We have two. Grab the red one. Yes. <gasps> wow. What are you going to do with them? I see that smile when he took it? Oh, He's yeah. like, yeah, I got uh -huh. what I wanted. Oh, what, what do you do when you get three? <gasps> <laughs> Look at that. Are you able to hold three? That's pretty amazing. I remember the last yeah. time he put one in his mouth so he can have yeah. the two in his mouth. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. that's pretty You're amazing. Right thing. Let's see what else I have here. Look at this. Do you like to stack blocks? Do you like to stack blocks? You do? So he tells you what he wants a lot by pointing. Yeah, that's yes. how he communicates. Yeah, he's, he's a big pointer. Yeah. Okay. You get a point and a eh. Yeah. Okay. And then we'll try and, like, you know, tell him in our language, you know, what do you want, the bottle or the block or... Uh-huh. So we really try and talk to him. Does he have words yet? No. 
Not words. words no. Sounds words sounds that sound alike. I mean, they sound like a like word. Dad, mom. I mean, yeah. I think we hear, but we're really not sure. Okay. He he kind of like when he gets a little ah! upset, he'll go the da 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 or the ma 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 ma. So it's he's, starting. Yeah, he's only to yeah. that point. How about receptive language? If you tell him to do something, does he kind of know what you're talking about, dude? He does, but he will look at you. Like earlier, I, I was on the computer and he went to grab it, and I was like, uh uh, uh and he'll just he'll smile. So it's kind of like he knows that it's off limits, but he's going to test to see how far. He's checking his limits. He's right? really see. big time in checking boundaries right now. He's yeah. testing his limits to find out what's okay and what's not okay. And yes, exactly. He does okay. that regularly. Okay. Yeah. How are you doing? Look at this. Look what I have. Have you ever stacked blocks before? No. Want to try that? Look. Can you put one on top of mine? Can you put one on top? Yeah, what do you think? That's okay. <laughs> He's just exploring that block with his mouth. Maybe I should bring bigger blocks. You have a big mouth there, little one. Look at this. <laughs> so, yeah, I see you have three. His yeah. mouth? Yeah. No, oh. one in his mouth, one <laughs> in each hand. Boy. He does. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. Okay. Take it out. So, wow. You know. So what's going on around the setting the <laughs> limits with you guys? If you say no, what, what's his reaction then? Uh, like you said, he, he like laughs at first and you stay with the no and he, he really he pushes it. So. He's pushing. He does. And then we'll try and remove him from the situation, whatever it is, and he'll kind of throw a little temper tantrum. Yeah, yeah we, we've, you know, we've kind of read a little bit of like Brazelton's books about uh -huh. with the temper tantrums and basically you, know, you need to let them know that it's, uh, it's not proper communication and that you don't respond uh -huh. to uh -huh. you know, hey. that kind of stuff. And that's what's really tough right now with him not knowing a lot of words is trying to figure out how to discipline him because right. Like I said, he's starting to understand the word no, but to him, it's like, okay, ha, 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 it's funny. And he's learned a lot of stuff like the hard way. Like the other day, I had a, a bowl in there, and I put it up here, and I said, no, okay, and he went to grab for it. And so I moved it, and he went for it again. I said, no, Cannon. Okay. And so I moved it again. I was on the phone with somebody, mm -hmm. and he got to a place where he got it, and he grabbed it, and he came running, and he fell and, <sighs> and hit it right here on the ground. And so and you can see right there, there yeah. he's pushing the limits with our dog, Chewy. Uh -huh. So Chewy told him. <laughs> so, but he, he's very persistent. Like, yes. it's kind of like, we'll tell him no. The dog tells him no by saying, by growling or whatever. And we mm -hmm. turn around, and he's always chasing that, the poor dog around. Mm -hmm. And Chewy is, you know, finally had to kind of nip at him a little bit to kind of get him off of him. So yeah. that's kind of the tough thing is, you know, the disciplining right now. Yeah. Have, what have you decided to do any further than telling them no, you know, for the future? Because things will be a little bit, you know, yeah. tougher as time goes on. A lot of what I do is, you know, we, we try to tell him no, and I try to just control his hands more than anything. I mean, we don't do any swatting or hitting mm -hmm. or anything like that, mm -hmm. and it's just no. And a lot of times, we remove him from the situation or try to, you know, move distract his focus. Him. Yeah, distract, distract him, him. move mm -hmm. his focus onto something yeah. else. So. Yeah. Um, you know, trying not to be negative in a sense with the discipline, but yeah. you know, still trying to get him to understand the bounds, at least until he starts to understand mm -hmm. language and, and consequence yeah. and all that. So yeah, because I think discipline's really a lot about teaching and learning. It's not really a punishment. Right. Right. It's about learning what the boundaries are, so that he'll know, and and he'll know what the boundaries are in the future. Right. Exactly. You know, Dr. Braselton says this: the second most important thing with the child is discipline. The mm -hmm. first is love and the second is discipline. Right. Because then they know that they want those boundaries set. Right. Sure, yeah. They keep pushing the limit to see how far it'll go and wh where it stops. Right, yeah. yeah. yeah he, he definitely does. He's into that. So, I mean, that's, that's where we're trying to, you know, figure the right yeah. you know, recourse for all of his actions. And, and it looks does. like he's pretty mobile. He's very mobile. <laughs> very athletic. Yeah. Very athletic. Yeah. Who yeah. does he take after? Well, athletic. <laughs> <laughs> The two of you, I think, right? <laughs> yeah. Yes. I'm thinking about how he is, his style or his temperament. Ah! What do you think he's most like? Want the frog. That's um, I don't know. He's 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 very headstrong, so that definitely takes after his mom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna move over. <laughs> Would you say he's very like intense as far as or very feisty with his temperament, or is he the kind of child that kind of? 
just kind of is, is very quiet and stands back and to see what's going on. Or I see the child that's just going to jump right in and He's get in the middle intense. of everything. He goes, kind of feisty. Yeah, he is. He is. He is feisty. Oh, look at he that. Really is. So his his brother and sister had him were very mellow, uh, easy uh -huh. temperaments, and he has got yeah. He's got it all. Yeah. Yeah. So thinking about this time last year when you were holding that little tiny newborn and that first year you were so in love and, and everything probably went pretty smoothly because you had a lot of control. So yeah. now mm -hmm. he's yeah. having more of his own thoughts about what he wants to do. Oh, yes. And every time we open the door, he runs out the door to, to uh, you know, walk out the door. Yeah. Oh, so he knows when the door opens what's right. going to happen. Yeah, he, he wants really to go. He's really, I mean, the biggest thing about him to go. say is Look. he really is about exploring bounds. He likes getting out and going out on his own, and he is really, Look he's really that. trying to learn a lot about life, so. Dad's telling me that you're a great explorer. Yes, you are. Yes, he is. He's like, I'm done so with now the with the mobility, I see that he's kind of walking around a little bit. A lot. A yes. lot. Mm. How has that affected sleeping, feeding, anything um, different? It, it, with his the sleeping, sleeping is different. I mean, it's. We try and keep him on a schedule, uh -huh. but it seems, you know, now, you know, we don't wake him up, you know, when he is an infant, every couple hours uh -huh. to feed. We let him sleep as long as possible. Uh -huh. but he, he, he seems to always, whenever we wake up, I mean, he, he's a very light sleeper. What are his favorite things to do or toys to play with or activities? What's the most, you know, engaging for him? It depends upon, uh, he likes the, usually the most expensive items in the house. <laughs> he, uh, he loves cell phones, computers. Yeah. Uh, he has an a odd attraction to remote controls, uh, you radios. Do? I've heard this in other homes I've gone in. Yeah. All you guys are going to be techno wizards when it's you grow it. up. Yeah, it's amazing. Like, you could give him a stack of blocks and the most the $500 cell phone. He's going to every time go for the cell phone. Yeah. So. Does he try to talk on it and imitate? He does. Yeah, he has he a lot. It just seems like anything that you're interested in is what he wants to be a part of. So. Yeah. And he's, he's amazing. At, uh, I mean, I've, I've taken Ooh. my cell phone and hid it in drawers, and he climbs up on chairs and gets in the drawer and roots around until he finds it. Like, and I've seen him walking around the house with my cell phone. Wow. I'm like, I have no idea how so he got So he that. watches everything you're doing. Every He's taking thing. it all in. He does, yeah. And yeah. He, yeah. He's very much about he finds a way to make it happen. I think that's why uh -huh. he's really pushing the boundaries. He knows, really, he's probably not supposed to have that stuff, but... He's a problem solver, it sounds like. Yeah. yeah he yeah. figures things out. Yeah, he's, he's good. He knows how to work the radio in there. He climbs up on the <laughs> chair, and he turns <laughs> the radio on and starts dancing. Wow. So, yeah, he's a dancing machine. Wow. <laughs> he gets that from his father. Wow. Look what I have, Cannon. What do you do with these things? What do you think about that? What do you think about that? Can we trade? What do you do with these? What's this all about? What's going on around feeding time now? He, we, you know, he has finger foods where he'll, he's able to feed himself, um, and usually that's what we do while we're preparing for the other kids, their meals, um, we'll usually put whatever, like today for a snack he had some popcorn, but usually like maybe cut up hot dogs or, mm -hmm. I don't yeah. know, something. He gets a donut in the morning and now he's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> He's gotten to the point where he knows in the in the cupboard where we keep them, and we see him walking around the house with donuts yeah. now. He'll go really? in and get the donuts out and help himself. And so he's pretty he self-sufficient. He knows what he wants. He knows how to get it. Oh yeah, he does. Yeah, like you said. They he, tell me great things about you. He's yeah. He's definitely. He's does active. he sit in the high chair when he's having? Uh, yeah. Does, yeah. Or breakfast? Mm -hmm. does he stay there for you pretty well? Try to get out or? Yeah, no, he does. When he's content and he's eating, he'll sit there. He'll sit and, there. Yeah, but when and he's ready to go, he'll let you know. Yeah. He'll How scream. He, he screams I mean, when he wants out. Yeah, like, ah, let me out. He gets feisty. Yeah. yeah. Hey. So you guys pretty pretty much just let him eat what he wants, and when he's finished, he gets up. Yeah, or we let him out, and then he'll he's he's able to play, or the the kids will usually take him, and then. Yeah. He usually gets in the bath probably about 8 o'clock. You do? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, he, so he knows what to do with the spoon. Right. Yeah, he does. So he'll try to, he sees it, he'll try to stick it into something and try uh -huh. to hey. figure out how to do that. Hey. What are you going to do with that? Hey. I have some great toys here, too. Look what I have. What particular, does he have any toys that he likes other than the cell phone and your things, or? Uh, yeah, we have. Hannah, um, look what I have. 
Yeah. He has a little stuffed penguin. <gasps> that he likes you. Aw, look at this. Watch what happens. Watch what happens. <laughs> he almost got daddy. What do you think? Where's it at? I was just curious to see if he's going to try to make it go. He's, he's trying. If yeah. He's going to watch what I did and, and try to imitate that. Or Does that want to push it? He's going to put it right back where it went, huh? Yeah. Let's see. Did you, you looked underneath to see if you could get it to go? Watch what Dad does. He'll show you. There you go. He says, I'm going to see how. Yeah, watch. Watch. Oh, that one does a wheelie. <laughs> wow. Did you see how he kind of looked underneath and then he looked at me? Mm -hmm. Right. How did she do this? Right. I'm curious to how she <laughs> made this magic. go. magic. We have a well, wizard in our living room. <laughs> That's great. He is a problem solver. He's trying to find out how things work. Mm -hmm. Now he's going to make it do a wheelie too. Well, that one's not working. Yeah, he says, <laughs> yeah. He's something else. Yeah, he, he, he is. He's something else. He's very like, uh, like I've noticed like some kids are like, he's very rough and tumble. Like he's just very, his, his actions, his motions, he's very mm -hmm. not gentle. Yes. Yeah. Like whereas, you know, his brother and sister were a lot more. He's just. They're different. They're mm -hmm. all different. Yeah. yeah they, they really, really are. Yeah, he's, he's kind of a brute. I think he's going to be one of those kids that's going to be nicked up a lot. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so what do you find the most challenging about having a one-year-old? The fact is, he, he really kind of needs constant attention. You know, he's always got to be stimulated in some way. And mm -hmm. so you really almost always have to have somebody keeping him busy or distracted right. on something. So right. and that's, that's what's kind of tough. Just, you know, when you're trying to get stuff done around the house, he always needs something to be... Right, right. Because he'll, he'll, like, be distracted with something like this for just a couple minutes. But it'll give you literally a couple minutes, and he's like, okay, I'm done with this. What's, yeah. what's the next what's little? What's next? Yeah. So has it been easy or hard for you guys to just to let him explore, but still keep him safe? It sounds like that's the challenge. It's a little tough, I mean, because we have stairs in the house. So, Ooh, I mean, if okay. the kids don't shut the door, put the gate up, I mm -hmm. mean, there's times when we come and we're looking for him. Because if we don't hear him after a couple minutes, we're like, okay, mm -hmm. where is he at? And he was halfway up the <gasps> stairs, and we're like, you were? Wow. You were halfway up the stairs. You're going to be a climber too, huh? Yeah. A climber. Yeah, well, his brother has like a ladder for his bunk bed. And uh, <laughs> he, he climbed up all the way up the ladder on the bunk bed. Oh, my goodness. So he just, yeah. So now we had to remove He's a busy that. Boy. We had to remove that. Yeah, so it's just, it's really just every day. We thought we had everything baby proof, but he is, he's exceptional. Yeah. Uh, he, he <laughs> he's going to try to outwit you. Yes. Uh, so how is it for the other kids? For the you know for the siblings now that he is so mobile and into everything, how is it kind of just made the whole household tipsy turvy or well, what's going on? Yeah, Sometimes I, I think so. I think <laughs> the biggest challenge is they're getting to the age where they kind of want their own boundaries. You know, they're 11 now, oh. and so they're starting to get to the point where it's like my stuff is my stuff, and so you know with him everything is his stuff. Yeah. So he goes into the room and helps himself, and you know I saw he had, he had one of the kids uh, mouse. The mouse for the computer was dragging that yeah. across the floor the other day. So he can yeah. unhook equipment and everything else. And you hear a lot of the kids saying a lot, um, "Kid and no, kid and no." I think that's what we hear around the house a uh lot -huh. because he's grabbing something that yeah. they have and. So the novelty of the newborn is over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're infringing on your brother and sister, Cannon. That's what, that's what little brothers do. Yeah. Yeah. But they help out a lot, you know. That's great. So diaper changing now is more of a challenge. Yes. He, he moves a lot. He moves a lot, yeah. Mm -hmm. He, he kind of gets a little bit, but there are times when you take him backwards that he just he doesn't like. Yeah. He always likes staying upright where he can move mm -hmm. and keep his eyes on everything and keep going, so... Sounds like maybe he doesn't want to lose that control. So a lot of times we're adjusting to, you know, what he wants. So if he doesn't want to lay down, so instead of hearing him cry or trying to fight, you know, half the time I'll just change his diaper as he's standing. Like, okay, just stand there. And wow, so what a great thing. But, you know, it's one of those where I had, I think one of my parents had said, well, who's in control, him or you? And yeah. I'm like, well, it's just easier that way. <laughs> you have to pick your battles. You have to decide what's really important. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. that you're really going to and stand it. firm on as far as discipline right. and what you can let go. Because you, he's learning so many new things right now. He's, he's mobile, he's learning language, he's learning what his boundaries are. And, um, and I think picking on everything that he does is just going to be too hard for him. And he's going to learn them one at a time. Right. And, and it's so great, Mom, that you're so wise to do that. Since he's all about standing and walking right now, you can change his diaper and his clothes standing up. That's a great thing. Exactly, yeah. Look what I he have. Loves that truck. Look what I have here. Want to see this? This is really pretty. What do you think about that? You like that? Oh, you do. Want to hold it? Wow, it's shiny. Let's see what we do with it. Let's, let's see if we can hide it. Let's see if Cannon can find it. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. <gasps> pretty. Watch. <gasps> Whoops. <gasps> pretty. I wish you could see the smile on his face. He's like, I know where it is. Oh, yeah. He had the look on his face like, I got it. You got it. Yay. Yay. That was a great job. Uh, yeah, he's going to show you. Uh -huh. Wow. Okay. Right. So that was really great to show that um, we're just exploring object permanence. Uh -huh. That I, I took an object and I hit it once and then I hit mm. it again. So it was displaced oh. twice. And he was able to find it. Oh, yeah, he's good at that, yeah. So he really is um, really able to probably find you guys anywhere in the house. He can find anything. <laughs> he really can. <laughs> you, you hide it up in that book. I mean, really challenge him. Put him in a book. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's amazing. So if you two are in the room and one of you walk out, or both of you walk out of the room and leave him here, does he get upset if you leave him? He yeah. does, for the most part. It, it depends upon what mode he's in. If he's in a mode like this, where he's kind of doing his own thing, and he's kicking around, he has two different modes. He'll be like, I'm exploring, I'm doing my own thing mode, and then he'll be like, I need to be held, I want somebody by me mode. So, then he'll right. find you if he's... Yeah, if and you just got to kind of read like his mood. Like, sometimes mm -hmm. you put him down and he's fine. He wants to go explore on his own, and other times you put him down and mm -hmm. now he wants to be held. So, so that's really great that you you just so aware of that. Yeah. You know what he wants. So you're his secure base, and it sounds like he's saying, you know, I'm really mobile now, and I want to go explore, and I have my own mind and my own thinking. I'm going to go away, mm -hmm. but I just want to know that you're still here. And it just, it's kind of almost like a 50-50 thing. Half the time yeah. he wants to be held, and the other half he wants to be down and, mm -hmm. and doing his own thing. You're a lucky guy. Your parents know so much about you. Oh, look at that. That's my reindeer. Can you give him a kiss? Hi. Hi yeah. Can you give the reindeer a kiss? Do you give kisses? Not yet. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. So thinking about what's coming up in the next few months. Sometimes I think what <gasps> the you. toughest part is, is get, it's tough to get to sleep. And so oh, sometimes when it's, like, when it's absolutely time, it's like you have to go to bed. Everybody has to go to bed. There's right. no and he still wants to kick around for a while. That yeah. sometimes for me gets frustrating because he'll continue to scream and yeah. you know, put up a fight. So I had had an issue with him one night trying to get him down, uh -huh. you know, where he just would not yeah. you know, go and down. Yeah. So what do you do when that happens? Um, you let him go in the bed by himself to put himself to sleep? Well, sure. yeah, I mean, a, lot, a big part of it is, is, you know, a lot of times, yeah, we, we kind of just, I, I, I make him kind of cry it out, you know, just kind of. Because, Where does it go? I mean, that's the only option. I mean, he mm -hmm. at that time has to go to bed. Right. Know, because it's late at night or whatever it might be. Yeah. So, you know. you go back in like every 10 minutes or so and say, okay, you're fine and lay yeah. back down. Yeah, I mean, I'll, 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 I'll usually, you know, we'll be there with him, you know, for uh -huh. it and, and during it. Yeah. But we're still letting him know that, hey, I mean, this yeah. is the way it's got to be. You have you to know? stand firm. So, yeah, exactly. And be consistent. I think consistency yes. is the key. And like you too. said, picking your battles. You know, we, we battles. don't, there are a lot of things that we, We'll kind of not necessarily give in on, but we'll move him on to something right. else and, yeah. and not be so headstrong on things because I realize right. he's you know trying to learn and explore. Yeah. There are a few things where you have to do. Yeah, yeah we find when you're in this state where mobility is really in the forefront, your emotions are too. They kind of go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. You'll see their emotions get you know a little bit more out of control too. Right. Um, sure. At this time, so being consistent about what you want him to do. Mm -hmm. it's, it's telling him, so he'll understand. Yeah, yeah. always something new. It's always something new, right? <laughs> so thank you guys so much for letting me come again. Oh, thank and you. And visit with you and Canon and 
and hear about all the great things that are happening here. If you guys have any questions at all, feel free to call me. Okay. I'd yeah. be glad to. Knowing him, we'll probably be driving by then. <laughs> Mine, yeah, I think you said car. mine. Yeah, you showed yeah. me. Oh, all mine? Yeah. Okay, you can have it. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you guys so thank much. Thank you. Yeah, hang yeah, in thank there. You. Absolutely. Yes. Try an easy job. <laughs> Say bye bye. Bye bye. On today's show, we heard the Ralstons discuss some of the challenges related to Cannon's growing independence and motor skills. Signs of learning receptive language are becoming increasingly clear at this age. If you ask a child to get a toy or a diaper, he will show you that he knows what you are asking, either by doing what you ask or by showing clearly that he refuses to do it, even though he knows what you mean. Children at this age are listening carefully to the adults around them all the time, especially when they talk with them. They are making sense of patterns and rules to string words together. They may not have the words, so they use sounds, gestures, and even pointing to tell their parents what they want. Usually parents can make out a few words, like mama and dada. Dr. Brazelton states that if a child's vocalization is not quite clear, parents can correct him by repeating the word. This tells their child that they expect his speech to get more and more distinct. When their child points to an object, parents can tell him the word associated with that object. A child between 12 and 15 months is eager to learn. Parents, you are your child's first teacher. Dr. Brazelton states that discipline is the second most important thing parents can do for a child. Love comes first and discipline second. Discipline means teaching, not punishment. The goal for parents is to help their child to eventually incorporate his own limits. Although limit setting can be difficult and frustrating for parents to do, Dr. Brazelton recommends that parents look at each opportunity for discipline as an opportunity for teaching. Dr. Brazelton states that a child's struggle to learn a skill as important as walking demands all the family's energy. All of the daily tasks of living are turned upside down for a short time. Trying to diaper a child interested in moving may seem hopeless at times. He is sure to flail, kick, and even scream at the thought of being held down to be diapered. A parent must learn to use other tactics to get the job done, such as diapering in a standing posture. A child at this age is likely to experience irritability and frustration over any restriction on his mobility. I hope you enjoyed our program. Join us next time on another episode of Positive Parenting Today as we continue to get to know families in our community and learn from their parenting experiences. We will continue to explore the touch points of child development as well as bring you topics relevant to the most rewarding role you will ever have, being a parent.